Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I uh, hope you guys had a beautiful Easter. Uh, mine was okay. Um, so getting right into it, I have been tagged by Shikele. Um, you guys know her as Chine, uh, she sells a uh, little hair uh, traditional little Nigerian gilly. Um, you guys should uh, check her out. She's a wonderful woman and she's I love her spirit. So she tagged me with this video um, titled um, Invade My Privacy and um, okay let's do this. Hold on, let me just put this on hold. Okay, so the first question says, um, did I wake up cranky? I didn't wake up cranky, no. A bit tired, but I didn't wake up cranky. I usually don't wake up cranky. Um, would I date an 18 year old at my current age? <laughs> Hell to the no, no, to the no, 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 it's not happening. That boy will be, come on, 18? That's old enough to be my second or third child if I got married earlier than when I did. Hell to the no. Child abuse. Okay, um, the third question says, do you prefer to be friends with girls or boys? You guys have had, um, wow, I, I just um, stay on my own. I'm weary of my sex and the opposite sex. When I was, I, so when I got into university, I was in, I entered university in the early to mid 90s. So straight from my father's house into university, so I was greenhorn. Uh, my sisters, my older sisters would make fun of me, telling me, well, I was, I'm writing this on my blog, um, still working on it, slow but steady. Um, so my sisters would make fun of me, oh, I'm always on my own, quiet and all that. They had the friends tripping in and out, they went for parties. So I thought I didn't, uh, I thought it was, I thought I was abnormal or weird. Anyway. During that period, I got into university and a lot of jam bites, all of us are many. I wasn't looking for boyfriends, they were. Anyway, I was in this girl clique and um, basically I was reading in the multi-purpose hall and one of the girls in the clique, who was my classmate, set me up, um, came with a group of guys and basically I was called a lesbian. I didn't find out till my second year um because after a while i just something i just woke up i was about to wake up one morning i was just the one going to go and look for them so they i was going to look for them and something just got to i think it was just it was like someone spoke to me so i just said god's voice said why don't you just stay and see if they'll come and look for you honestly i, I woke up and i looked around i, I thought Somebody had said something to me, excuse me. Um, but all my um, roommates were either outside or they'd gone for their, they were just taking their bath, we all getting ready to, to go for lectures. So I just stayed back and I started hanging on my own. Basically, it, I, that was a lot. You can imagine, going to school in university in Nigeria in the 90s and to be called something like that. Now, listen, I have worked with a lot of gay people, both women and men. They are the, they are wonderful people. I, You do you and I'm I myself. They worked well and they, they're kind, they're beautiful people, but coming from a country that frowns of such things. So you can imagine how I was ostracized and I didn't know why I was being ostracized in university. Perhaps if it was in secondary school, I'd say, okay, but that was a big deal. There were male people. I mean, my roommates knew and wouldn't say anything to me. It took 
some two guys who woke up who walked up to me and asked me boldly am i a lesbian so you can imagine me walking on my own um where was i going i think perhaps i was going back to i think i think i was going to the multi-purpose hall to do something i think maybe i had a drama a dance or something so i was going i was on my way there and they just you know you know blocked me and they asked me that i said um i looked at them as i was embarrassed and he I was like why would you ask him that kind of thing and first i was i was also going to church i didn't understand where these guys were coming from anyway one of the girls eventually started coming to apologize to me apologize to me apologize to me and when you can imagine when i was almost <laughs> last semester for my second year and this uh, i find out this is what happened and my roommates are like you don't know i was like how would i know nobody said anything to me anyway i felt very bad i couldn't even talk to my older sister i called but i couldn't say what happened because i was just like why would i even say that kind of thing to someone how would i even say that to my sister you know you guys it was a lot anyway that was it for me and girls no and um karma caught up with her because i think now the reason why she called me a lesbian was because some guys liked me and they didn't know how to come up to me so they thought they'd go through one of the girls to get to me so they went with this girl she liked them for herself so she shot me she did that to me she thought she could hang with them Anyway, um, not that I, not that this is a good thing, but word had it that they um, turned around and drugged her, and they had their way with her. Because I don't want, I don't want to use the the, word, the graphic word that's heavy in my heart. Um, yeah, so that's that's it with that was it with girls i just started minding myself and doing things i accomplished a couple of things in, in school I, I got into modeling i did a couple of side so because i was broken so in university um i a lot of good things happened for me so thank god um the reason why i'm not into boys either is because sometimes <laughs> You guys my heart is very clean and I don't like being misread go I'm hanging out with you as a guy and you I've been harassed a lot of times I've been sexually harassed N not rape but the best thing for me was just to be on my own so I talk with my hands a lot when I'm trying to explain so that's why I stay on my own I'm it, it, that time it confirmed to me you're quiet because you're more creative you're I am I, I'm me and um, I I'm just me I'm beautiful I I'm better off just not being in a box I'm outside the box I'm weird weirdly beautiful and beautifully weird so that's it I don't have girls I don't have guys I'm just myself <laughs> praise the Lord so um the next question is um would you smile at a stranger i do that all the time it's just my husband says i'm so nice i'm too nice because <laughs> it's just me i smile at people before they smile at me because sometimes i feel and i've read that a smile can be what can stop someone from committing suicide and i've heard someone give that testimony he was about to go, he lost everything, and he was about to go commit suicide. And someone who didn't even know him, didn't know what his problem was, just smiled, gave, gave him a beautiful smile, and kept moving. And that was it. He turned his life around. He said, somebody who doesn't know me could smile at me. He looked raggedy and God knows what. Uh, you guys, I live... For positivity to give I I'm not a woman of many words but I just like to be good like, I try I'm not perfect I'm still very human but I anything that has to do with positivity to aid someone to feel better I'll hey okay 
Um, how do I look right now? Oh no, sorry. It says, can I commit to one person? That's always been me. I can't. I can't. I, 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 this is what I'm saying. I love with my very being. I connect to someone with my very being. So for me to even engage or have you around, it is a process and that's based on all the negativity in my past. For, so for someone to be in my life, that is deep for me. So, and when I am in a, I don't know how people do it that they can do. I've seen it done. People, hmm, I'm just gonna try and hold it down. We ladies are very good, and I don't know how guys do it as well, how they can be in diff distributing yourself to different people so they're just taking from you taking from you you think it's uh you think you're the smart one but you're actually not the smart one to sleep with different people or to be in a, to be in a to come to be committed to different people that's a lot that's a lot of spiritual things going and they are with people they've been with people too so do you know what you're they're taking from you you know, so it's for me, you have to, I learned to pray. Don't get me wrong. I, just, I was in a very long relationship and I didn't pray. I used my head and God was behind, but now I'm married. I put, I learned life took me, brought me to a place where that relationship just had to end. And I had to learn, I, I got to a place where I was just so tired of bitterness of tears of <sighs> you guys I just learned to put I just it, I got to a place where I said listen Lord I am done and my body was literally tired and I learned to pray and I was surprised that good things that are happening to me I just prayed and I didn't have to do anything and I just got all the things I need I didn't even expect from God that's the truth Okay, so yes, I am committed to one person. Sorry if I digressed. Okay, um, how do I look right now? I, how do I look? You guys, how do I look? I lightly made up to look presentable. Um, so I think I'm good. Hair, it does go me to one side. Dots, earrings. Okay, um, what am I wearing right now? I have on a mini skirt and my grey top that says wife, mom, boss. I got this from the Shein and my mini skirt is from Target. So my earrings, people. Oh. Yeah. Okay, um, how often do you listen to music? I mostly listen to music when i'm working out i listen to i love what our boys in nigeria are doing now oh my god i love what uh david doe has done um i love his song if i love techno ziawa i love flavor i love um tiwa sandwich not sandwich sandwich <laughs> Tiwa Savage, Tiwa Savage, uh, uh, listen, it's, uh, all the Nigerian music people, hey, who am I not to support my people? You guys, we got it. We are rich in culture, in our language. We are the spice, Nigerians are the spice of Africa. You cannot tell me anything, man. We spice anything. Go and buy our spices and use it to cook your rice. Come back and tell me. That's how spicy we are. We got you guys. We are it. Eh? Okay. Um. Let me see. Do you wear jeans or sweats more? Um. I have a lot of jeans. I put on weight. I had to switch to sweats. Okay. Um. Do you think your life will change dramatically before? 2017 we're in 2017 now as a person i 
learn. I'm here because I've learned to think positively. Faith. Think big. I'm that kind of person. I always say it. Be good. Be positive. Listen. There is great power in positivity. So yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, I've not been perfect and everything, but I still know what I want. It is not quick. I'm not moving fast. But I know that by the power in the mighty name of Jesus, great and powerful things are happening for me in Jesus' mighty name. Last year, you guys, I was meant to undergo surgery. But for prayer, you guys, but for prayer. Doctors couldn't say, doctors couldn't, they didn't know it's, they said my problem was idiopathic. Idiopathic means I don't know what is wrong with you, but there's something wrong with you. Prayer is what changed anything. A few minutes of prayer, I walked out of um, I walked out of a test room um, without pain. Just confuse the doctor till today. Think big, pray, stay prayed up. It's great. Okay. Um, are you a social or antisocial? I'm in between. I have my moods. Um, so, I, I, you guys, my life has been with a lot of noise. I've been in the modeling industry, music. I've acted and had to be surrounded with a lot of noise. I was in aviation, seeing people and... Excuse me, I just... If, Excuse me, I ate fruits and I didn't drink water, so pardon me. So I've been a, I've been around. Um, I've had a lot of noise in my life. So if I'm antisocial, I have to go out. I'm doing it for a, a purpose. Antisocial is for me. I want to be home. I don't want to be disturbed. I want my peace and quiet. So it's that's why I say I'm in between. I have my mood and times. Um, if the person you like says they like someone else, what would you, I think that's what would I say? In the first place, I'm old school. So I don't verbally walk up to people and say, hey, I like you. Um... I'm thinking towards the opposite sex. So men are hunters. I'm prey. How are you gonna come get me? So I would not be walking up to someone to tell me, hey, and that person now says, oh, um, mm, Jesus, I'm too beautiful for all that. Because, secret Oh, sorry. I spoke you, but I said, I'm too beautiful for all that. Please carry your goods, carry your load, and. <laughs> keep, keep, keep the stepping. <laughs> no time for that. <laughs> okay, um, says, are you good at hiding your feelings? I used to, and that just kept a, a void of darkness. So for me, um, when I don't like something, I don't react immediately. I wait for when the atmosphere is not fiery hot. And I've also learned that from training. If something is wrong, move out of that environment and kill. Can you drive a stick shift? I learned how to drive in Abuja and the... Uh, yes, I did learn with the stick shift. Um, and now I drive an automatic. Yes, I think if, yeah, I, I think if I was given a stick shift, I think I could, yeah, I can, yeah. Let me see. Do you care if people talk badly about you? <laughs> Honey, I have had so many knives in my back. I, hmm, it would hurt. But I learned that where there's negativity, you pull yourself away, otherwise it will drown you out. So if I hear or perceive or just feel that there's something negative being said about me, I will not mix with those people because um, they got issues. 
If someone has to say something negative about me and it's not true, but you're trying to just water me down. You got serious issues, you jelly. Town soon, I'm hoping, yes. My husband is talking about it. My husband and I are talking about it, we don't know where we're going. But yes, going for going out, going away somewhere. Yeah, change of environment. It's good. Um when was the last time you cried? Ooh. Have I cried this week? No, I cried this week. I cried two weeks ago, not bawling, bawling, but um, so I had this one woman I met in the church I used to attend. I was just drawn to her, I couldn't tell why. Um, she died last year and in November and I never knew, in fact the pastor of our church, church members didn't know how sick this woman was. And she came when my son when my when my child when my son was born she moved in and took care of him i was still in school she was there and even when she moved away she would tell me oh she had to go to the doctors she did, 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 you know i was like okay how are you doing oh but the thing is i was leaning on this woman and she was always praying for me i did not know how bad this woman's health was Oh my God. And when I think of my last call with her, it makes me sad because she wasn't audible. She wasn't really clear to me. And um, she kept telling me, oh, I can't think straight. And I was starting to get like, why don't you just rest? And I'm sorry to get emotional. Why don't you just rest? I'll talk to you later. And I never spoke to her and next thing I got called I got sent a message that she had passed this lady had breast cancer and from the time I knew her the um, cancer spread to her liver it got so bad that she um, she developed a brain tumor this woman was Therefore, she was always coming to visit me at times when I was just alone with my son. My husband was um, out of the country. The people who came to help me, she said to me, this woman, I, based on how things I've gone through in my, my life with women, I t tend to be on the defensive when, it, when someone is trying to be, be um, friendly to me. I'd step back because I'm like, what, what are you coming with, you know? So she said to me, don't refuse my help and my first night with her I wasn't really nice because I I hadn't had a, anybody be so nice to me so when I think of all the things that she did and she never one day told me how sick she was and she just died and I miss her because Days when I felt so bad in the pits, this woman would call me and pray and pray and pray. How many people are like that? That's so sick, but they're helping you that like you're fit, you're, you're so healthy compared to them. So she died last year and um, yeah, I cried too. I remember her ever, every now and again. Um, God rest her soul i pray and i believe in my heart i refuse nothing else that she's in the arms of the lord okay so the next question would be ha huh, have you ever liked someone you didn't expect to yes <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm married to him <laughs> yes my husband is the absolute love of my life I have not had people who, I've never had anybody who would see you. I never had anybody who saw me down in the dumps and would come and pull you and pull you and pull you until you, until you start beginning to crawl and then crawl and walk, walk. And then I'm jogging now, basically. I'm jogging and very soon I'm going to start running and sprinting and flying my husband is a fabulous man 
I he <laughs> for years this man was on my case <laughs> and I was like what's what and you know when you have series of men just be negative or they're coming to you because they want to get into your knickers nothing positive filthy dirty ratchet old people not, not necessarily old people but my husband came and he was more about yes so my husband came into my life as i was just praying i just i didn't know i was just praying to go for direction to bet to just grow as a woman and just i um had some business i was trying to start off back in nigeria it never did but i i my husband came in when i was very I was just in the midst of prayer. I was just praying, God, I really, really need direction. I don't look like where I am. I don't like the way I'm being treated. I need to go, go, go. And my husband came and he was always picking, putting a lot of um, seeds of wisdom, positivity, asking me, what do you want to do? He was like a breath of fresh air. Wasn't somebody who was trying to sleep in me. So I was taken aback. I'm like, who is this? So bit by bit, I started listening to his strong words. Uh, he became an acquaintance. Then he became a friend. I would listen to him talk, talk, talk. I started thinking of greater things. My husband is a great thinker. I sometimes I marvel at the things that he says. I'm like, oh my God, is that what? You know, but I've you, you need to have somebody like that who is in who is who you can talk to you he can shout at you he can tell you calm down that's not good I don't know you know you need somebody who, who will teach you so um yes I didn't expect to like my husband now I love my husband yes mm -hmm. right um if you had to change your eye color, would you? No. Um, but I will say one thing that's... Um, I haven't recently, but I used to wear green contacts off and on. Off and on. But I just like the color. I'm just drawn to green. Eye contact. Hmm. Um. Name something I have to do tomorrow. Something I have to do tomorrow. I'm going to the movies with my family. I'm gonna watch Boss Baby. So yes. So this is it guys. This is my privacy invaded a little bit. My life is full of a lot of stories. I could hmm if I sat down with some producers in Nollywood, they would have <laughs> a lot to say. Anyway guys, so I ooh. Let me see who I'm going to. Who should I? Uh, I have to let her know. I, f I follow this lady. Her name is Fumi Desalu Vold. She is a wonderful uh, woman. Um, yes, I, I want to tag her to do this invade my privacy tag. Uh, who else do I follow? Uh, Everybody else is doing big gay. Bobo big scares. Oh, let me see. Okay, I think I'm also going to ask, um, I'm going to tag Da Boss Ella. Yeah, I'm going to tag her as well. So Fumi Desalvold and Da Boss Ella. Um, I can't really think of um, anybody else. You know, lots of people are doing big skates, so mm, I just mind myself. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, I think of anybody. So I'm tagging Fumi de Salufold and the boss Ella. Okay, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my invade my privacy stroke story stroke. Mm. Yeah. 
so we gotta go my boys want to eat pizza so i'll see you guys in my next video over now